Hello, and welcome to the CPS 360 Show. I'm Kieran Malloy. And I'm Matthew Rothamick. We start our show today with a feature story on the Hickman High School football team. For the Hickman High School football team, the theme for this offseason was change, and a lot of change. Coming off a winless season, there were many struggles ahead for the QPs, but no one could have foreseen the struggle of dealing with the unexpected passing of head coach Arnell Monroe. The biggest and most unexpected change for the QPs this offseason was head coach taking over for the QPs this year. It was previous assistant coach Devin Brown. Coach Brown, he's a different coach than Coach Monroe, but he's usually the loudest ones at the practice, so he keeps us motivated the most, probably. Coach Brown, is a, he's a lot more structured with everything he does. He's a lot more uh, strict and snappy, so uh, he's, just, he's just a lot more strict, and everything we do is, is really structured. Many consider the quarterback to be the most important position of the football field. With previous quarterback Carter Nikolai graduating last year, another change for Hickman is the starting quarterback, Devin Crane. Crane comes in this year as a junior with lots of athleticism and has many of his teammates speaking very highly of him. Pretty smart. He knows the game of football. Uh, he's got a good arm, nice spiral. He's really smart. He's, uh, he's able to think quick in the pocket. He can adjust to the defense really well, and he's got a good arm on him, so I really believe in him this year. Finally, one last change for HHS is that over the offseason, Hickman High School changed football classes. For the first time ever, Hickman is not in the highest ranked class as they drop from class 6 to class 5. This means Hickman will play untraditional opponents such as Webster Groves and Jackson High School. For some players, new teams brings new excitement. He's the difference from the classes that we're moving to is just, it's just going to be a difference. It's like a surprise every week, but we're going to have to work for it if we want it. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot different because we haven't seen any of these schools. So each, each week we're going to have to uh, look at you know, the film for that and all that. Change is a part of everyone's life. Some people like change, and even more hate it, but for the most part, change always seems to be for the good. While the effects of all these changes for Hickman haven't been noticed yet, let's hope that all these changes will lead to keep his back to winning ways. With CPS 360, I'm Matthew Rothermick. Thanks, Matthew, for that great story. We hope that Hickman can get back to its winning ways. We keep the Hickman theme rolling with our next story on the Hickman softball team. The 2016 high school softball season is underway here in Mid-Missouri. At the heart of it are the Fighting Naked Babies. The Hickman QPs, led by senior starters Cassie Ken, Lauren Hosler, and Lindy Wilson, as well as underclassmen Emily King and juniors Caitlin Fogue and Abby Dubinsky are looking to have a good fall season. Hickman started its season with its home opener against the Boonville Pirates. The QPs dominated the plate, hitting 15-2 against the Pirates' defense. The QPs scored four runs in the first and 12 in the second to make the lead 16-0. Hostler was on the mound to start off, allowing only two hits and suppressing any chance of the Pirates pulling ahead with five strikeouts. The QPs finished last season with a losing record of 8-9 and nine and hope to make some major changes this season. Coach Haskell said that looking ahead, the QPs are hoping to develop their young talent to have some good years to come. Team captain Cassie Kent spoke to what the team hopes to achieve this fall. Um, definitely to have a successful season, hopefully a winning season, and just to get better each game and learn from our mistakes and just to have fun ultimately. Head coach for the Hickman QPs, Courtney Haskell, had some words on the QPs nice for tip. this season. Uh, I think right now, probably offensively, just to be a little more consistent. Um, and defensively, a little more consistent. Very early in the season, we have a wide range of upperclassmen and underclassmen, and it's just kind of finding the balance and um, what's going to click. For them. Taylor Spencer gave me a word after the game. Um, I think we have a really good team, and I think we all get along pretty well, so I think uh, playing together is going to be good, and we should come out with a lot of wins. Thank you. With CPS 360, I'm Kieran Malloy. 
That was a great story. The girls seem like they have a bright future ahead of them. I sure hope so, Matthew. We step outside the city limits for our next story by Alex Weimer. He brings us a feature story on the Hallsville football player, Jaden Kilpack. Starting wide receiver, DECA state qualifier, state champion pole vaulter, Jaden Kilpack is a senior at Hallsville High School. He is an academic standout and a leader on this year's football team. He, he's the more outspoken one of our leaders. He, he doesn't like losing. He's the one that he doesn't put up with excuses or anything. If you give him an excuse, expect to get hit in the next play or something, he's not going to take it. Jaden says that his work ethic is his best characteristic. Uh, someone that everyone wants to be like, someone that's always working hard. Junior lineman Ian Hayden claims that Jaden also brings a lot of aggression to the team. Jaden's always energetic at practice. He's never complaining about this or that or about how hot it is. He's always working hard. He earns a lot of praise for his concentration and athleticism. I think I bring a lot of uh, intensity to it. Uh, in the game, I'm able to uh, work hard and everything. And during practice, I'm able to have fun and uplift everyone. And we're all joking around and having a lot of fun. Favorite moment from Jaden will be Fayette last year. He went up for an interception and he caught it and the, the receiver hit him in the back and he did a backflip, landed it, and took off. For CPS 360, reporting from Hallsville, Missouri, I'm Alex Weimer. Boy, Jaden sure seems like one heck of a ball player they've got down there in Hallsville. We wish him the best of luck this season. We move from the Indians to the Bruins with a story by Savannah Singletary on the Rock Ridge volleyball player Avery Schroeder. Rockbridge Lady Bruins Volleyball 2016 roster has a standout player. Senior Avery Schrader, you can't miss her. Standing at 6'5", it's pretty impossible to. But her height came at a price. She was diagnosed with scoliosis in fifth grade, um, which is pretty much just a curvature of the spine, uh, likely due to how fast I've grown all my life. And so it finally reached the point where my curve was big enough where I was going to require surgery at some point in my life. Uh, how that done in April of 2015. Avery is a two-sport athlete, playing in volleyball in the fall and basketball in the winter. Just really getting into the swing of how high school sports work, she has this surgery. It was obviously a little bit nerve-wracking, but I knew it was something that I needed to do, um, and that was going to help me later on in life, so I tried to go about it pretty uh, calmly and confidently. Senior Blake Metz and Avery have been best friends since the first day of kindergarten. I, I happened to be in Kansas City where she was having her surgery done, and so it was just perfect timing. I went over to the hospital and I bought her this giant teddy bear, and she's named it after me now. <laughs> so it now, but apparently helped her while she was in the hospital too. So it feels good that I can help too. <laughs> I'm really happy with everything. Um, my doctors did a great job. I owe a lot of thanks to them. New varsity coach Aaron Kincaid got a coach's dream. Play. Extremely coachable. She will do anything that you ask her to do. Uh, she's a hard worker. Um, if I tell her to um, to swing harder, swing faster, she will do it. If I tell her to move quicker, she'll do it. If I tell her to um, guard the line, she'll do it. So extremely coachable, um, high work ethic, um, and very positive individual. You can catch Avery at the next Rock Ridge Volleyball home game on September 27th at 5 p.m. I'm Savannah Singletary for your CPS 360 Sports. Nice story, Savannah. Now let's go to some early season highlights from some of the Midmo teams competing this fall. Our first highlight comes from the soccer pitch where Rock Ridge took on the Hickman Cupies in a rivalry game known as El Classy Como, and Sam Club was there to shoot it. It's that time of the year again for Hickman Rock Ridge soccer. Both teams came into the match ranked high in the state. Both the Brew Crew and Dog Pound Order came to support their schools. Early in the match, it was senior Sean Kenning who started the scoring for the Bruins. By the 21st minute, the lead doubled when senior Ryan Imhoff racked up a goal. The Bruins would add two more goals and increase their lead to four by the half. The senior leadership helped the Bruins shut out the QPs four to nothing. 
Our next highlight features the Hickman soccer team once again. This time they took on the Jeff City Jays and Ben Elmore had the camera rolling. We start off at Hickman High School with a beautiful night of soccer. Hickman QPs versus the Jeff City Jays. This was supposed to be an easy one for Hickman after coming off a loss to DeSmit High School. It ended with the battle of two great defenses and this is unexpected. Hickman's goalie Jacob Gunn versus Jeff City's goalie Cord Pearson. Hickman made it close to the goal, very, very close, and attempted over four times but never made it in. After two overtimes with no score on the board, an unexpected ending to the night, Bryden Corn shot the winning goal for Jeff City to win it 4 2. Ben Elmore kept the camera rolling, this time on the football field where he captured the Hickman football QPs against the Helias High School Crusaders. We go on to Helias versus Hickman High School for another beautiful night of high school football. Helias went straight to scoring, scoring 41 unanswered points at the 40 half. Hickman's athletic director, J.D. Coffey, did not look happy about that, but Hickman did end those unanswered points with Andrew Patton going to the house with a minute less than a half. Hickman scored again in the second half thanks to a 60-yard run by Christian Davis, but in the end, that didn't stop Elias from beating Hickman 52-14. Hickman has not won a game since 2014. Let's head back down to the south side of Columbia where Sam Club shot the battle on the gridiron between DeSmet and the Rockbridge Bruins. It was a beautiful night for high school football in Columbia, Missouri. The DeSmet Spartans took on the Rockbridge Bruins. With two touchdowns by junior quarterback Trevor Tweethouse and senior running back Keon Pilot, the Bruins with Tyler Spartans at 13, halfway through the third quarter. Shortly after that, Rockbridge would tack on 14 more points. Their lead climbed to 27-13, with over 11 minutes to go. Unfortunately, the Bruin defense would give up 19 points in the last eight minutes, and the Smith came away with the W by the score of 32 to 27. We've got one final highlight where we give tennis a little love. Hassan Kasif was on the scene for the Rockbridge Jeff City tennis match. Last week, there was a grueling tennis match in the heat of the summer at Bethel, as the Rockbridge girls tennis team took on Jefferson City. Jefferson City took a two game to nothing lead, but then Rockbridge came back and won four games in a row. Jeff City only won one more time, and the final score came to be six games to three, with the Bruins on top. It's safe to say that the fall sports here in Columbia are in full swing. Thanks to Sam and Ben, as well as Hassan, for the great highlights. Well, that's all we've got for our show today. I'm Matthew Rothermick. And I'm Kieran Malloy with CPS 360 Sports.